uh, hopefully people can uh, view my screen yes sir thank you sir um so uh, very good evening anon very happy to be part of this uh, fdp and uh, thank you for the opportunity given where uh, it is uh, merely a privilege for us be to um, present the concepts what we know about the, the basics of the research and how do we play the basic tools which can uh, um, enlighten us more about how this particular tool can be taken to the next level and um, when i started this research again i was having uh, certain confusions and uh, uh, lack of clarity was there throughout when i uh, pursue my uh, career so when i uh, research career but again uh, time and again i was trying to overcome that by learning or by uh, making some uh, different understandings as i told you this particular uh, research is a arena where uh, no one can call themselves as an expert because the expertise is a level which keeps marking up and up so we cannot make ourselves or we cannot claim ourselves to be an expert on this particular uh, um, arena of research all we can do is we can better our mode of thought and we can better on creating our uh, insights about that particular tool that's the maximum which we can think about it so with that uh, preset i'll just uh, take you through the uh, topic for the day topic for the evening analysis of variance before i start with uh, analysis of variance i just want you people to uh, uh, understand about these two personalities because always i strongly believe that uh, it's not the tool or the quality of the tool which we adapt to make our research more prominent rather the reason for the tool which we are adapting it should be complementing to the study what we are planning to do so that way uh, you should understand the anavas uh, reason why it was been invented and only then you can uh, uh, appreciate okay that could be the reason for or that could be the place where the proper application of anova can be uh, used or can be adapted so for which these two personalities are very uh, prominent and again uh, a, a person on your left probably would have known now uh, that is uh, albert einstein who started this, uh, this theory of relativity more surprisingly for this for his brains uh, um, uh, prevalence he should have completed theory of relativity 9 8 years before but that was not happening he was it took 10 years for him to complete a, a theory of relativity to prove all because uh, the speed of the light cannot exceed 3 to 10 to the power meter per second so that's the only element which stopped him to go for uh, declaring e equal to mc square on the particular place so he was not able to do that because the uh, at that time everybody had this concrete literature that c is equal to always uh, light of I mean uh, the speed of the light so unless he was not able to break because uh, his uh, idea was uh, there are elements which can travel faster than it. so if that is the case then what could happen to the uh, uh, real time physical elements so that he was able, not able to prove at that uh, point so it took 10 years for him to uh, make it but I, again why i wanted to uh, compare it with the, the person whom you're seeing on the right that is sir ronald imel uh, uh, imel fisher so he is a person who uh, identified or who found anova the right after the next year anova was found in during their uh, 1980 the concept was invented and uh, uh, during 1919 theory of relativity is in the mars area so people have started uh, recognize them that does anova play any vital role in this scientific research of uh, theory of relativity or can we adapt it to the uh, various areas of functional areas of the management how does it the statistical tool which was related for the scientific study has been adapted to the management study what sort of uh, a different change overs that has happened so these elements is what we are going to see and of course a touch of spss and excel which could help you in understanding the anova better so uh, again talking about fisher uh, fisher he was not a statistician he is a genetical engineer so he is a, a genetic engineer and he always try to create a seed uh, and he try to code the dna of basic seeds so when he uh, when he was um, uh, making seeds and he wants to measure the produce that can be the output of that respective seed he wants to make changes in the different chromosomes or different uh, dna aspects trying to measure the output at different intervals so he was not able to identify what would happen if uh, there is one group of seed which has underwent one change there is another group of seeds which has underwent another change is there any difference between the mean of produce what is happening between these two uh, group of seeds so he was he wanted to have the statistical approach to solve his um, scientific uh, problem there made when I mean, it made fisher to come out with a statistics called anova so anova is again nothing but you are trying to identify two groups 
with between the groups how the variants could possibly act and within the group how the variants could possibly act having these two descriptions it could clearly give you a picture on uh, whether the uh, groups or whether the output can have the uh, hypothetical uh, acceptance or hypothetical rejections so those elements can be made easy when we are trying to do this anova between and within the groups so this is how this anova was coming into the picture it was purely statistical and again this was adapted by einstein so einstein started uh, trying out with major con combination of formulas and finally he arrived at e equal to mc square by using this particular element of anova because he was having certain um uh, periodic table based chemicals and uh, each chemical has got uh, uh, the atomic and the nuclear reacting uh, powers so based on the different combination he was trying to uh, make people or understand okay e equal to mc square could be the basic formula so again i know on one side uh, after that that has made a theory of theory of relativity that was quickly possible within one year after anova it has been made so having said that uh the problem is we doesn't know where we uh, apply anova um, generally in the research i i, I always uh, remember this joke there was a scientist who was doing a research on the frog and uh, he was trying to uh, make some research out of frog so he had a frog when he said jump the frog jumped and he noted this particular element okay the frog jumped and he cut one of the limb of the frog and it said jump and he said jump and again it tried to jump with three limbs and it was able to jump not to the greater heights but okay then to the limit and he cut the second limb he said jump again and it was again trying to jump and he did the same he cut the third limb and the fourth limb once after the fourth limb was cut when he said jump the frog was not able to jump so here he is writing the conclusion for this particular study so how he concluded the study is when you cut all four limbs of a frog frog becomes deaf uh, though it sounds like so uh, annoying there is no any flaw in the output he said four times jump and it has jumped and which means uh, when the fourth limb was cut there is nothing wrong in writing that particular output but logically we feel that how come this when the limbs are not there probably that uh, the jump couldn't be the uh, right scenario that wouldn't happen right so see me many of the times what we feel is the logical output is getting defied because of what were the uh, um, the statistic elements we are using where we experiment something and logically we are defining something and we are not we are coming out with a basic or flawed output so to or flawed conclusion so to overcome that we need to have clarity on for which or for what purpose do i apply this particular tool so when you are having the clarity on application of the tool that makes your uh, ability to understand the tool and conclude or interpret the output of the tool so only those things are possible when you understand the basics of the tool and again which you if you are able to understand the application where are the proper areas i can apply the tool so having said that again i'll just go back to is there a statistical difference between the output so just go through these basic explanations when you are cooking a renowned dish okay we'll just take any one dish when you are cooking a dish and uh, have you have you witnessed any sort of change when i did the uh, dish uh, a week before and after there could be any factorial changes there could be some sort of uh, changes which you have and done it but because of that is there any change in the output so now when i do this and when we buy a substitute mostly used products so we have multiple products for example i'm just buying a substitute for one particular product so now i can undergo uh, uh, or applying for anova thinking that okay is it okay possible for me to identify this substitute product is uh, equally good or as good as your main product can i come to that particular conclusion when we test a new technique on a old problem again there is uh, more chances of applying this particular tool when we choose the goodness of the treatment we are having a, a group of people and where we are giving a different i mean uh, uh, who are having the same disease but a different treatments which treatment is going to have the better output or better cure for the patient so like this so when you are having uh, these kind of a practical uh, uh, implications okay these are all the places where we can Uh, identify is there a statistical difference between the uh, outputs is it possible and uh, now uh, let me uh, take you through this particular example so there was a treatment which has happened and again there are uh, three different group of patients and uh, each patient is given with treatment 1 treatment 2 and treatment 3 it is diagnosed that each uh, patient or the patients uh, are having the similar disease 
but in the various uh, uh, severity of the disease the diseases are same but the severity is varying from one level to the other level so when you are having three different uh, treatments now when you are having a patient who is getting cured in 5 days because of treatment one patient is getting cured in uh, sorry 5 days in treatment one 3 days in treatment two and 7 days in tre- treatment three if i ask you which could be the better treatment of course without any much of the thought we can come to the conclusion saying that treatment two which could uh, possibly uh, make the patient's cure in 3 days could be the better treatment of course in the aspect of the patients not in the aspect of the hospital of course in the aspect of the patients i'm getting cured in 3 days definitely it is a better treatment so we come to that conclusion but there are certain elements which um, doesn't support that particular statement what if the group of people or the sample who underwent this particular treatment to are having less severity is there any explanation about the severity of the three groups are different there is no any uh, explanation on that and what if the treatments uh, um, uh, the treatment is given in a, a prolonged time when it is not been meant for treatment 1 and treatment 3 even that could be it what if the patients are partially cured already who has been part of this particular treatment too what would happen because of that also their patients could have get uh, cured in could have got cured in 3 days now since i don't have uh, enough substantiations on these aspects it is difficult for me to come out with uh, saying that treatment 2 is a better choice so anava tells us is there statistical difference between the means of three or more independent groups these three groups acts as an independent one are we having the uh, uh, statistical difference between the three means so that if it has been a uh, consider then again probably anova could be in the place now as i told you we don't have proper evidence in support of the decision anova doesn't play i mean um, anova actually comes in the play here where it tells you that whether your uh, treatment one treatment two and treatment three is having the uh, difference uh, based on the uh, condition of the treatment not because of the condition of the patients so if i able to substantiate that if at all i wanted to substantiate that then probably the only tool which could be available for me is could be i know so whenever you are trying something definitely you would have seen the horlicks advertisement uh, that's the famous advertisement which uh, adapts anova so perfectly uh, if you just look at that advertisement advertisement goes like this uh, it says they would have divided a group of children into three different uh, uh, teams one team will be given with uh, 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 horlicks drink other two teams will be given with other uh, different drinks but the lifestyle of three groups are same the food habits of each group are the same the physical activities of the each group are the same now there is no any big difference between the other factors now when they measure the height weight and sharpness of this uh, respondents or the samples who took horlicks as a drink now generally they come out with a conclusion saying that the tallness or the uh, sharpness of the respondents have got increased a little now how it is possible for them to come to that conclusion or arrive at that conclusion because they applied something called as anova so they made the conditions very logically correct between the different groups and when you are applying one particular uh, 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 experiment that experiment is been tested on a common environment then finally the output has been taken and measured and we can compare which is a better product so unless you don't have a proper or a closed environment unless you don't have the uh, equalness or the unbiasedness of the sample this anova is highly impossible so when you collect the data we need to be very careful that this uh, data what i collected is unbiased and it is collected with the uh, common understanding on the environment which we are focusing so that has to be much common so uh, having said that now let's uh, get on with what i'm planning to cover for this uh, uh, session so in anova i'm just planning to cover these aspects one is starting from introduction of anova of course i've started a little terminologies when you learn anova what are the basic terminologies which we need to understand one way anova two way anova and manova of course manova is not part of it but i just thought okay even this could uh, give you a priority of when you having multiple 
uh, factors when you're considering to uh, make a study out of it. So that way, MANOVA could be a uh, wonderful tool in understanding that. Okay, so the basic understanding is, you could have uh, seen the picture here. Um, this bill-shaped curve, probably which we call it as a normal distribution, probably that is covered in your, uh, the previous two, uh, uh, three lectures. Any data, when you're uh, taking up or when you're considering it, ensure that this data falls under the standard normal distribution. Meaning, when your data is in the curve structure, eliminate the uh, data which is falling in the, uh, the uh, outskirts of the curve. So then probably that mean value of each curve will be considered as a top point. So now this is called as your normal distribution. So whenever you are when you're having a data, ensure that the data falls in the normal distribution. So we use a statistical technique which we can compare these three treatments. I just take the same example here. Analysis of variance is a statistical technique that is used to check if means of two or more groups are significantly different from each other. So the basic analysis, I'm trying to compare the mean. If someone asks me how it is different from the t-test, t-test, okay, again, when you can restrict your sample less than 30, it could be the application of the t-test. And when you are going for uh, taking variance between the two groups and trying to compare their mean, um, then again, you are trying to apply ANOVA. So this is the basic difference between the t-test and ANOVA. So ANOVA, you can restrict your samples to 30 and you can uh, 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 take mean value here. And in your ANOVA, we can take uh, variance for uh, computing your uh, f-stat value. So now uh, these are the basic elements which you need to know. So the first condition is when you're doing ANOVA, ensure that your data falls in the normal distribution curve for which you should have uh, uh, underwent skewness and curtises as a basic study. So uh, uh, a data which is skewed mostly, definitely the ANOVA could not be applied on that. So ensure that the data is not skewed uh, between uh, between the too much of the scales or too much of the levels. So we need to ensure that one. And terminologies when you start, we need to get to know about the basic terminologies, which is uh, starting from um, grand mean. So, of course, mean value probably you wouldn't have you would have known that one. Uh, data set I've shared a few data sheets with you people, uh, uh, one or two Excel sheets and uh, two um, um, SPSS file. I've shared it with you. If you can take up a data set one of uh, Excel, then probably we'll move on from there and identifying the um, mean from there, we'll just get on with one way on over, two way on over and uh, the other aspects of it. So, uh, uh, people hope you're able to see my screen, uh, the Excel, what I've shared. Just respond on the chat. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so uh, probably this is uh, the basic test which uh, which I have brought it forward because when you understand the bigger uh, uh, research topics which you can uh, apply ANOVA, which you need to understand the basics of how, where, or where and all we can apply the ANOVA. Right. So now uh, I'll just try to explain this data set first. Uh, you are having three classes. One is class A, class B, and class C. Each class is going for a different types of lecturing mode. Of course, majority of us are teachers, so I just sort of taking this as an example so that we can understand better on uh, the comparison of the means. So here what I'm doing is I'm having three different classes. Each class are given with the different types of lecture. One is colorful video and lecture mode. Second one is a discussion mode. And third one is a general lecture mode where a chalk and talk could be the, uh, the mode which has been adapted. Now, when I go with these three modes, I'm trying to understand what could be the possible performance of the students? So I've taken the test scores of the students who attended a uh, colorful video and lecture, that is class A, and a team which has attended a discussion mode, that is class B, and uh, the lecture mode, which is class C. So I have taken the test scores of, I've taken the test scores of uh, 10 people who has attended the different um, values. Uh, sorry, who has attended the different uh, uh, lecture modes. Now, coming back to calculation of the mean value. So, when you calculate the mean of scores for the first uh, colorful, that is colorful videos and lectures, the average score stands at 7. 
Class B and Class C, if you look at it, the average is somewhere in the four in the discussion mode and lecture mode somewhere it is somewhere near four point three. Now, when I take this particular mean value, it is nothing but addition of this course and divided by total by ten. So that I get me the mean value. So now, if someone asks me which is the better uh, lecture mode, so now probably everyone could answer that Class A, uh, where they adapted colorful video and lecture mode. So that particular mode of delivery is always better. So how do we come to that conclusion? By having only one mean value called as your variance. That is your sorry, your uh, mean of that particular course. Then finally, we can arrive at that is after calculating the mean value of one particular class, let me calculate the mean of three uh, uh, classes A, B, and C, and I get the grand mean of five point one. Now, when I have this five point one, here comes the real problem. Now, uh, how to compute this five point one's understanding? What is this five point? How can I uh, have the basic understanding of this? So, five point one being very close to these two, and this particular mean value is having the highest deviation. So, for which I support or I take a support from a variance value. So, what I do is I'm calculating variance of two rows that is P ten and P twelve. So, when you take up this P, uh, that is your variance value, variance between P ten and P twelve, right? So from variance of this particular value, I'm calculating. So that is showing two point seven three, and standard deviation of uh, same value. That is this particular means deviation. I'm trying to calculate again. It is showing somewhere around one point six five. So now when I take this uh, variance between the mean values, it is showing two point seven three. Whereas when I calculate the Uh, average, sorry, the standard deviation of these values, which is one point six five, which means that is your positive or negative deviation, which is happening between the mean value and your individual scores. So here the mean value is seven, and your individual scores deviation is somewhere leading to one point six five. And here again the same. So when you are comparing the mean values on the standard deviation, you are taking one point six five as your average or or your uh, uh, overall deviation. So again, when your deviations are Much higher, probably your data is not uh, prominent one to take up any sort of test because when you are having the wider range of data, it is skewed or it is being cut off on uh, horizontal or on the vertical axis. So it is so difficult for me to understand when your data is so skewed. So try to make a data which is having the minimal deviation from the mean value. So if you have that one, probably your variance factors will be very less. Now having said that. now i need to understand the second basic terminology which is nothing but your hypothesis so when i take up hypothesis for anova the basic uh, uh, formation of hypothesis of course you would have uh, seen in your previous uh, lectures that is uh, null and alternate hypothesis when i declare null hypothesis i say that between group 1 and group 2 does the mean value have a coordination or not does the mean value have significant difference or not when i compare group 1 and group 2 and group 1 and group 3 and group 2 and group 3 these are these are the three possible combination or the comparison of the uh, groups i can do that so when i do that do i have significant difference in the value of variance if i have the variance value differing so much between group 1 and group 2 probably i'll try to take up the acceptance of uh, uh, alternate hypothesis and i'll try to reject them So for doing that, we need to have the second level or the third important terminology, which we call it as understanding the variability within the groups and between the groups. For example, that's the reason why I just uh, uh, I just mentioned about the calculating the variance value. So when you calculate the variance, that probably gives you the uh, identification. so here for the uh, first group that is class a the variance value that comes around 3 uh, and for the group 2 the variance value that comes near to 3.01 so here again that is again a 3 so which means that the variability between these uh, marks and the mean value and the variability with uh, comparing the mean value 
with the individual scores doesn't have too much of variation which means that as i told you in the beginning now this uh, data has not underwent any sort of biasness or this data has not underwent any sort of uh, um, uh, environmental uh, impact so that is not been conducted on these two so now we'll try to measure whether they have scored or because of the lecture what they have attempted so that's the only element which we need to cross so for doing that we need to go for applying the one way analysis so before that, so let me uh, uh, explain you this uh, variability between the groups and variability within the groups so each uh, normal distribution curve will be considered as the group so within this particular uh, group if i try to understand the variance that's called as variability within the group and here when i compare the variability from group 1 to group 2 that is variability between the groups so here what i calculated that is 333 which means that there is variability within the group so i don't have too much variance uh, difference in the variance between the or uh, uh, within the groups of three different groups but how it can be applied on variability between the groups that i don't know for which i need to apply the next method that is one way anova two way anova or uh, multiple anova so my, i mean multi way anova so any of these methods i can adapt and can come out with uh, understanding the variance okay so now the next uh, uh, element is epstat epstat is nothing but calculating the uh, variance between group variability divided by within group variability so when i use this ratio i will be calculating a value called as epstat so in your uh, anova the basic calculation is you need to understand the epstat value so the statistics the, the statistic which measure if the mean of different samples are significantly different or not is called the f ratio lower the f ratio more similar are the samples in that case we cannot reject the null hypothesis so you can uh, understand this one so whenever you are having the f ratio which is much lesser which is much lesser then it means that the sample mean that is when you are taking three different groups the groups mean values doesn't have too much of deviation so we cannot reject null hypothesis which means we need to accept that there is a uh, there is no significant uh, difference between these variables but again uh, for doing this this is the basic understanding of that but uh, let's perform one way anova and let's try to understand the test on the uh, data set which we have got it so we'll do both ways one is excel and one is uh, spss so why i wanted to emphasize more on excel is uh, even in excel the uh, understanding and the comparison could be a little easier uh, whereas in your spss the problem is uh the output could vary when you have the small or minimal change in the data and uh, you need to be very careful when taking the data of course we'll take the same data and i'll try to show the outputs on the different uh, platforms that is spss and data but advantages of spss is you can do the post hoc test so easily so quickly so that way this po post hoc test becomes very easy when it comes to your uh, spss mode of right so we'll try to have both um because basically i'll try to uh, explain you the uh, one way anova so this i'm trying to do the one way anova for this particular test so here in your excel when you are working on try to click on this data in the data probably there will be a last element called data analysis which is not available here so to bring that data analysis part go to the account click on uh, file menu in that you can go to the uh, options in the options you can go to the add-ins so in the add-ins you are having this analysis tool pack so you can click on that one So click on this analysis tool pack which can be added now i think it is added so now let's see uh, yeah so if you go to the data you can see the data analysis tab is already added so now you can click on this data analysis tool it uh, shows you the different aspects what are the different possible uh, analysis which i can do it here starting from an over single factor two factor with replication two factor without replication and then correlation covariance so i do have these many tests 
of course t test is also possible regression is also possible in your um, excel uh, there is another one software which i'll try to i mean uh, yeah, intimate you when uh, after completing this excel and spss for a while after that i'll just uh, try to start with uh, the other version of excel so now uh, let's move on to the one day analog first i'm just clicking on single uh, factor analog uh, uh, yes sir uh, wda 04 now if you have any questions you can ask no i uh, just sir please uh, repeat that how to uh, add in that uh, ah sure ma'am sure sure ma'am sure i'll try to do it from the beginning uh, uh people when you are starting this uh, opening the excel probably many of the times this data analysis tab will not be readily available it will not be in the uh, default state so you have to go to the uh account so click on file i just do try to do it slowly file click on options in the options you can just see the uh addons on your left second uh last icon click on addons and when you click on addons you will be having multiple addons that is already uh, being part of your excel now click on this analysis tool pack so click on analysis tool pack and when you click on this go icon here you can click on the go icon then this drop down list box will be the drop down box will be available for you in that uh, these uh, these three are for the different purpose solver is totally a, a different where we can uh, try to create more addons for our own names so that's the purpose of solver addon so that we'll hold on for a while analysis tool pack or analysis tool pack with dba so those things can be added and uh, now i'm trying to add analysis tool pack here. so check that particular box and click okay when you click okay on that one you'll be having this analysis data analysis tab on this particular uh, excel by default so once you close this and once you open it again the data analysis uh, uh, pack will be readily available uh, ma'am hope you got the method how to arrive at this particular uh, data analysis tool okay so now let's Okay, now let's uh, move on to the one way analysis. So now what I do is, once you click on this data analysis tool pack, the ANOVA single factor, which is showing there on top. So I click on that, I click on OK. So now it will show you the small uh, box in which I need to uh, select the input range. So my input ranges are, uh, I have taken 10 samples and each sample falls under three different groups. This is group one, this is group two, and this is group three. Right, so I've selected three groups, but the problem here is here my group of samples are done row wise. So my data is grouped row wise. So from column I need to swap it to rows. Okay, for example, if you have the data set which is having column wise data, then probably you need to select column. That is group one, group two, group three. If you have three groups in column wise, select that particular output. Select, I mean, select, I mean, select that particular input range of data and click on columns. In this particular data set, I have a data which is having a uh, uh, row wise uh, exhibit of individual scores. That is 10 score, scores of 10 students. It has been mentioned in the uh, three different uh, rows. So I'm just choosing rows as your column and label is the first column, which means that your when I, uh, why I check that particular boxes, my first uh, column is mentioned about the label. What is three data sets? So group one is class A, group two is class B, group three is class C. So that has to be mentioned. So for which I need to select label in the first column. So once you click on this OK, it will take you to this ANOVA single factor. Right? So it will uh, take you to the ANOVA single factor value. So here, no any calculations, we have done it. So once on the click of that, OK, it will definitely take you. So, so I'll just go through one more time. Go to the analysis, data analysis, and over single factor. Click OK. It will ask you for the input data range. Input data range, as I told you already, ANOVA is nothing but comparison of uh, different groups, mean values, or based on the variance, we can compare the values. So here, what I can do is I selected three groups, group A, group B, and group C. That is class A, class B, and class C which has underwent different types of lecturing modes and their test scores are taken as your data set. So now I've just chosen this as your columns and I've clicked OK. Because of that, I'm just taking this particular uh, uh, data set as your, sorry, uh, this output. 
so in this output let's start interpreting that so in this particular output two elements are very uh, important two factors are very important in that so let me uh, highlight that value first one is f so as i told you f stat is nothing but division of two things one is uh, between the groups value and within the groups value ms so when you have this ms ms is mean of square values when you divide that probably you will be arriving almost close to this particular uh, value 8.18 so f stat value or is a f stat is nothing but your f stat value so this i can highlight it like so this is your f stat and this value that is your f critic so generally when i do this f critic value is also equally important for me because uh, when your data is normally distributed when i identify the mean of sample and the mean of the population between these two values i need to understand is there any combination is there any link for understanding that generally we look out from the table value we go to the table i uh, based on the degree of freedom we look at the table and we'll identify for the 0.05 significant level what is your table value so that table value is nothing but your uh, f critic value so i have two values f and f critic so now if you look at it my f stat value or f value is greater than f critic value okay so the first identification is f is greater than f critic the second identification is my p value so my p value here it is showing 0.001 so my p value is less than 0.00 sorry 005 right so two identifications i have done that so one identification is what is my current f value the next one is what is my f critic value i identify that my f value is greater than f critic and the second identification is your p value so p value when i identify it is showing it is less than 0.05 right so now let's get back to the conclusion now the conclusion is identify whether it is alternate hypothesis accepted or uh, your uh, null hypothesis accepted so i need to identify that one so what is a hypothesis generally which we have declared here thus in spite of difference in the lecture does the scores of different students have the same mean value or because of the lecture mode does the score value undergo a change or not right so of course this is the uh, the whole uh, explanation of your hypothesis generally how hypothesis how we declare it is between the groups and within the groups what is your f value and p value so whenever it is less than your p value is less than 0.05 it's always better to accept null and when you are having this f value which is greater than f critic value again the condition is the same sorry uh, people just make a note of that one when your p value is yeah p value is less than that we need to uh, accept null and we can uh, cross check in the powerpoint also the same uh, data analysis which i have done it here so for this data i am just getting the same outputs here so here this is how i have done the uh, hypothesis gender will not have will have no significance sorry uh, this is for the uh, other data set okay so now in this particular data set does this particular uh, mode of lecturing does it have impact or not so that i am trying to uh, read it here so here what we will try to understand is when you declare a null hypothesis you need to say that there is no significant effect of your uh, lecture mode on the score and h1 that is your alternate hypothesis could be there is a significant effect of your lecture mode on the scores of the student so these two are the basic identification which you are trying to understand so when you uh, have this f value greater than your f critic value then probably we need to once again yes
Okay, uh, people, hope you are able to uh, see the screen here. So, F value and F critic value are they are identified, and the P value is less than zero point zero five. So, when you have these conditions satisfied, then it is possible. I mean, it is uh, uh, okay for me to reject my null hypothesis. So, when I reject the null hypothesis, it actually means that the mode of lecturing is having greater impact on the test scores. So that's the elimination. That's the uh, 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 identification which I do it once again. Uh, N W D A zero four. You have raised your hand. Can I just uh, help you on that? N W D A zero four. So here, under this condition, we need to reject null. So under this condition, when these two conditions exist, then possibility is we need to reject the null hypothesis. So rejecting null, it means that there is no significant difference. Uh, Ma'am, NWDA04, you have raised your hand. Uh, how can I help you? Is that any question which you need to ask? Uh, okay. And we can ask a question. Oh, sir, sir yes, actually, uh, mm -hmm. sorry. See, uh, when you uh, when you run this test, I can able to understand all the uh, interpretation what you are explaining. You know? Just Fine. the thing I want to ask you is like when we um, initially when we run the test, like okay. how to go to data analysis and when we update this data set which we okay. want to run and over. Okay. You yours you are in your. Uh, uh, final result, I mean output, you have okay. uh, received this class A, class B and class C and okay. ours, when we run that it says uh, numerical, I mean non-numerical data is also included, it says that. Uh, then probably I think because you would have selected the uh, data which is non-numerical, for example, ma'am when you uh, just go back now, I just start doing right from the beginning, just try to uh, grab that one, for example, when I am uh, selecting the data, uh -huh. data analysis, I know a single factor. So what I'm doing is after clicking this, I need to select the input range. My input range I've selected from this place. That okay. is class A, class B, class C till my this value. Right. So after that, my label is in the first column. I think probably you wouldn't have checked this uh, box. Oh. If you can check that box, probably it will not show you that uh, numerical data is uh, it's available. It's part of your data. Can I just check so that? So label one? in the first row should be yeah, selected. First column, yeah, because in the first column I'm giving label right now. So for example, class A is the group of people who attended the lectures and uh, with a colorful video, and group B is discussion mode, and uh, group C is lecture mode. So okay. that is a label. So I need to tell that uh, the, you know, I need to uh, um, say the computer that the label is in the first column. So when I say, say that one, it understands. Okay, that is a numeric, non-numerical. So once you okay. click on that, it takes you to the uh, analysis. Can you just ensure that it is going? Oh, it still says that uh, uh, the same thing. Not the, your data contains. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, for example, grouped by uh, which uh, icon is there? Uh, it is in the columns or in the rows? Uh, it is in the columns. Uh, change to rows. Okay. Because my data is in the row wise representation. Okay. okay. Sorry, sorry. No worries. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now you just click on it, it will take you to that. Okay, so now let's uh, quickly move on to the uh, output file. So output, all we need to understand is only this, F is greater than F critic and P is less than 0 0.05. When these two conditions work out, generally whenever your F value is greater than F critic, your P value will be always lesser than 0 0.05. Seldom, very, very minimal cases when you have some disparity in the data where you will have mismatch in these two. But most of the time you will be having the uh, same condition. So when you have this condition, always remember that you have to reject null. So now uh, let's move on to the two-way ANOVA. So in the two-way ANOVA, what I do is I'm adding one more extra variable to the existing data. For example, uh, I know that there are two groups, A and C, which is having the highest uh, 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 variance comparison. So now what I do is I take only two groups class A and class C. So class A is having colorful video and lecture as a mode of delivery and class C as your lecture mode. So you can uh, uh, shift, go to the data of two-way ANOVA. 
in that what i'm adding is i'm trying to add it different age group of people for example people who fall under the age group of 4 to 8 people who fall under the age group of 8 to 30 people who fall under the age group of 13 to 17 so when i have these three different age group uh, people now does this lecture mode bring change in the score value of class a and class c because they fall under different age category so i have two different factors one is group of people other one is age as a another factor now i am trying to test my scores on two elements so those two are age and your individual uh, class and their experiment what you have done on the class so when you data is undergoing a change like this again click on the data analysis here click on anova two factor with replication click okay on that it ask for input range so when it ask for the input range so try to give uh, uh, your inputs are your different age groups which you are selecting here which you are selecting is uh, age groups you are selecting here in this rows per sample each row how many samples we are taking 1 2 3 4 and 5 so rows per sample try to give 5 people i'll try to do it, uh, a little slowly or just repeat it again when you are doing anova that is two way anova the possible thing is you are adding one more factor to the existing one last time what we checked is two different group of people who had a two different lectures based on that i am cross checking which based on the scores of the test after the lecture i am identifying whether the lecture played a uh, vital role on the scores or not i am trying to check that similarly here what i am doing is is it applicable on different age groups or not okay so if it is 4 to 8 years and 8 to 13 years and 13 to 17 years i take multiple uh, age groups so here again you can add any number of age groups so that it don't it don't be a problem here so in each group i am taking five samples so i take five is a rows per sample okay rows per sample is five the reason is if you take class a it is showing 1 2 3 4 and 5 similarly class c 1 2 3 4 and 5 so as many numbers you take it you can uh, easily you can ask for uh, uh you can easily ask for uh, the samples which is available okay uh, people i'll just try to go a little story here so here we are trying to do the two way and over so in the two way and over i am considering two factors one is class a and class c groups which are having different uh, type of lectures and age group in years that is ages also i am just considering along with that right so when i click on this icon so now we have got the two way anova output people i'll just repeat it again when i take the two way anova how did i start is very simple go to the data analysis anova two factor with replication it will ask for the input range in the input range select the three different age group of people who underwent the lecture that is with the colorful video and lecture mode in that i am taking five samples for each class and each age so that's called as rows per sample let's do it this way so when you click on that you will be taking your yes so this is your output for your two way one so when you do this two way one over again the analysis is going to be the same let's take up the uh, analysis what we have done for uh, one way on over i'm trying to take it for the two way on over because the condition is going to remain the same condition is going to remain the same okay now i'm cross checking the f value and f critic value 
So if you look at the F critic value, all the three F critic values are almost same, but your F value is undergoing a change. Okay, so only in the condition first, that is your sample column, your F value So your F value is this and F critic is this. So when I cross compare, my F is greater than F critic. Now coming back to the other three values. Okay, other three values, if you cross compare it, all the other three values, F is less than your F critic value. And again, if you compare the P value, again, only for the first condition, your P value is less than 0.05. Okay, so now the condition also prevails, but I can reject the null, but only for the first value, which is your age group one. So when you are having the age group of, when you are having the age group four to eight, that is a minimal age group, that is having the highest impact or that is having significant effect on the lecture what they've attempted. So lecture mode and colorful video mode is having more significant effect on the minimal age group that is four to eight years. Whereas that has not created impact on other two age groups. That has been proved by the other F critic value and F value. So here F critic value is greater than F value, which is F value is 2.8, whereas F critic is 4.49. So generally here the condition is getting failed, which means that I need to accept null, which says that there is no significant difference between these two values. So when there is no significant difference, which means that the data what I've got for um, the class A and class B group, 8 to 13 years and 13 to 17 years, these two age groups are not having huge impact because of their lecture, what they've attempted because their scores are totally different. But whereas in your first age group, that is four to eight, your age group, you're having highest impact because of your lecture mode. So that's the output which you're getting because of your uh, two way on our of data set two, which we have gone through that. So this is the basics of static data. Now let's move on to the data set for SPSs. Right. Probably the data set for SPS is also, I just shared it with you. Hopefully if you can uh, open that, then quickly we just go through the data set of SPSs also. So I just gave you a data set for SPSs one, one way ANOVA, I just given you that. So I've just opened the data set. So in the data set one, you can open SPSS in that SPSS folder. I've shared you the data set file uh, within brackets. I've mentioned as one way or no. So try to open that particular data set and we'll try to uh, experiment the same, whether it is possible or not, whether it is working the same way, which we have done it there. When you're uh, feeding the data in SPSS, you can uh, see the basic difference here. So class A, class B, class C, all are in the column wise and the scores are in the second column. But whereas in your Excel, your data was totally reflected in the different way. So in your SPSS, you have two ways that is your uh, variable view and data. view. So when you go to the variable view, I just mentioned very clearly uh, class A, class B and class C and scores are in the Likert scale form. So it's a scale uh, numerical one. So it is mentioned as a numerical data, right? So hopefully people have started the, uh, I mean, opened the data set for SPSS. Now let's start doing the analysis. Click on analysis. In the analysis section, go to the compare means. In compare means, click on one way or no. Right, so where we, where we can find one way or no, very simple, go to the analysis. In the analysis section, compare means and go to one way on over. Clicking on that, it will take you to this uh, dialog box. 
in this dialog box i need to choose the dependent list and the factor so here the dependent list is my score why my dependent list becomes my score i feel that my score of the students can undergo a change can be dependent based on the delivery mode so that's the reason why score becomes my independent uh, dependent list and mode of delivery is the factor in choosing for doing the study right uh, people are getting this one i mean oh, hopefully you can understand this first basic element is which is your dependent my score of the students what i have done, what i have collected is completely dependent on the lecture mode or the mode of delivery so the mode of delivery becomes your primary factor for assessment score becomes your dependent list right so now let's get on with the other elements clicking on contrast there is no any changes required on the contrast column so let it be uh, remain the same clicking on the post hoc uh, generally when you are having uh, different types of study for example when you are doing a, a market analysis study customers level of satisfaction customers perception towards the product brand identification awareness of the uh, um, brand uh, people's preference towards certain products people preference towards certain treatments so when you are doing these kind of study so we, generally what we do is what could be the mindset change among the consumers when they before they use the product and after they use the product so probably we need to take two different groups of data if i have this particular two groups of data only then i can go ahead with understanding or one only then i can go ahead with applying and over right so now as i told you i have three groups of people who are different uh, lectures so here in the equal variance assume generally there are three methods which you can uh, adapt one is lsd that is least square uh, distance and the uh, bonferroni and 2k so these three elements you can check it up and you can start conducting your test and it's not that sidak and all the other tests are not required but the basic understanding depends on these three uh, that's the minimum uh, requirement which you need to conduct when you are uh, going for uh, preparing a thesis so generally this could be helpful when you are having these three basic tests lsd bonferroni and 2k so taking up these test i click continue checking on the options in your uh, checking on the options uh you can check on descriptive analysis and homogeneity of the variance test so these two are uh, uh, really required uh, mean plot again it depends few researchers they expect their mean value need to be plotted and the pictorial representation they expect but again it uh, uh, it depends on how much you require that particular plot in your study but uh, generally i don't uh, uh, wish to have that one. so descriptive and homogeneity could be the uh, basic uh options that i need to choose for conducting the study so now after setting that bootstrap don't uh, see to that it's all uh, no any bootstrapping mechanism has been switched on and when you click on okay your output page comes onto your screen like this yes so you can look at the f value so here in your spss generally you will not have the f critic value so f critic value will not be generally available uh, on the particular uh, column where you are considering and so uh, sir output page is not visible sir one second uh, sir how about now is it visible ah, yes sir now it is visible okay thank you okay so now uh, generally when you see the output of this uh, one way and over here you can uh, maximum you can just see the f critic value alone so whenever you see sorry f value this f value is 8.1 uh, i'll take you through the spss which we have solved through x i mean sorry uh, the data same data which we have solved through excel in that excel also you can just witness the same f value which is 8.18 and here it is 0.001 and here also it is witnessing the uh, same significant value as 0.002 and the last decimal has got rounded off and it is rounded off to 0.002 again which is less than that so now this is how one way anova can be applied on your uh, spss platforms uh, so here when you are working on the platform the data set again it can undergo any number of changes for example here i can add uh, the next data like uh, adding age of the people here adding uh, does age creates impact on the score i can undergo a study uh, like i can uh, add up with the, the uh, the parents education does it affect the impact of the score so like this i can keep adding value one after the another and i can keep studying whether these factors also create impact on the score or 
that is possible so when i add one more factor it becomes two way anova when i have another few factors then it becomes one over right so hopefully uh, you understand this basic concept when anova and manova it's basic is when you have two factors considering for uh, um, comparing the mean value between the two groups if you consider two it is called as two way anova and if you have multiple uh, factors considering the uh, impact of the score impact on the score then probably that comes under your manova uh so now let's uh switch back to the two way anova so when i go to the two way anova i have shared you the data set here again so data set for spss two way so that's the name of the file so i'll just try to open that particular file I'll try to uh, uh, so when you are writing the interpretation for uh, the one way ANOVA that is your the first test so the interpretation for this particular uh, analysis the output as i told you already it is showing f critic value is 8.1 so when you have the larger uh, f critic value and your p value that is your p value 0.02 which is less than 0.05 interpretation is always reject null hypothesis so here the hypothesis what i have declared is already i told you that one i have three different groups of people so each group is going for a different uh, lecturing mode so does the score of different groups have any significant difference or not if you say that there is no significant difference in the scores based on the lecture that's your null hypothesis and if you say that there is a significant uh, a difference between the score and the lecture mode then it is comes under your null, uh, alternate hypothesis based on your output of your spss file so for example uh, let's go to the output here so output here it clearly says that significant value is 0.02 which is less than 0.05 which probably it makes us to reject null when i reject null i am forcefully up, uh, accepting the uh, alternate hypothesis my alternate hypothesis says based on the lecture modes that is your lecture mode have a significant effect on your scores right so that's your uh, basic understanding of how to uh, see the uh, anova's interpretation so f critic value whether it is less than f and significant value whether it is less than 0.05 so these two are the basic checks which we need to identify so always when your f value is greater than f critic value and your p value is uh, your sorry your significant value is less than your p value when these two conditions work out it is uh, um, uh, to avoid the type 1 error we possibly reject null hypothesis so rejecting null hypothesis meaning that these factors are having impact on the scores so now let's slowly move on to the uh, two way anova so in your two way anova this is the data set which i shared with you so now as you see i have just added another two factors of course the data set i just uh, uh, there is a small change in us uh, i have taken gender of the uh, people who attempted and age of the people who have attempted the test so gender age is also being part of my study now so i have included gender which is boys or girls and age factor and based i am trying to cross check whether these two factors create impact on the score or not right so to do this again i am forced to take up two way anova so uh, for interpreting or for um, um, for drawing the two way anova all i need to do is go to the general linear model people i'll be a little slow here analyze under analyze column go to general linear model in the general linear model go to univariate analysis okay so analyze in analyze column general linear model under the linear model you can click on univariate so once you click on univariate this will be your uh, dialog box that gets opened okay so this could be the possible dialog box uh, people hopefully you are able to see the dialog box here yes sir yes sir 
ओके सर थैंक यू सर ओके सो इन दिस डायलॉग बॉक्स लेट अस चूज द डिपेंडेंट वैल्यू लाइक योर प्रीवियस वन वे अनो अगेन स्कोर बिकम्स योर डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल बिकॉज द स्कोर कुड अंडरगो अ चेंज बेस्ड ऑन योर जेंडर द स्कोर कुड अंडरगो अ चेंज बेस्ड ऑन योर लेक्चर स्कोर कुड अंडरगो अ चेंज बेस्ड ऑन द एज फैक्टर सो आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदर दीज फैक्टर्स आर क्रिएटिंग इंपैक्ट सो नाउ व्हाट आई चूज इज स्कोर इज गोइंग टू द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल the other two that is your gender and age goes to the fixed factors because this i'm just not making any changes here because score could be the only thing which can be dependent and there your gender and age does it have impact or not okay so now after clicking on this fixed factor and the dependent scores now let's go to the uh, uh, the items which is on the uh, right hand side click on the model uh, generally uh, type 3 could be the sum of squares which you can Add it here. Sum of squares could be always type three, so don't try to change anything here. So this will be uh, the same uh, default version which we will be having it. Again, in the contrast, I don't want to uh, add up or change anything on the contrast. Now let's go to the plots. In the plot, what I wanted to do is I am trying to bring gender uh, on the some axis. For example, gender I have only two uh, basic gender boys and girls. So when I have the a uh, combination of only boys and girls then probably i have less number of uh, options whenever you have less number of options try to take that in separate lines when you have more options because in the age group i have 10 11 and 12 so that goes to the horizontal axis there is nothing wrong if you uh, swap these two only thing is you you'll have a different plot okay so here when you do the two way anova it is better to take up the plot so age goes to the horizontal axis gender goes to the separate lines the reason for choosing this is very simple separate lines i have chosen gender because gender has got only two choices that is boys and girls and age has got uh, three choices that is 10 11 and 12 for example if you choose gender and income groups income generally we have uh, four to five different options so when you have four to five different options take it on the horizontal axis right so that way you can whenever you see when you compare two different factors try to take the factor which is having the higher uh, options in the horizontal axis so you can add this one close this post hoc study again post hoc study for both the factors i need as i told you lsd von ferney and 2k so these three can be the choice which you can select it so they display the means of gender and age Uh, people here you can just look at it when you are doing a uh, two way anova it is better to choose two elements one is descriptive statistics homogeneity test in few researches what they will expect is the estimates of the effect size when you have sample of course my sample is so less here when you have the sample size which is huge that is more than 600 700 plus samples then probably it is better to choose estimates of the effect size right so estimate of the effect size will give you whether your sample is creating impact on the score and the hypothesis so that can also be done so it's better to choose uh, estimates of uh, estimates of effect size based on your sample size of course i have chosen the residual plot also so now once i click on this okay now my univariate analysis again this is the two way anova which is showing it for me okay so when you look at this uh once again let me ensure that the output file is shared uh, people are you able to see the output screen yes sir it's visible thank you sir okay so now let's uh see the uh first let's begin from the um plot here once again Okay, so now. let's uh, start the interpretation from the plot what we have ad adapted so when i uh, started with the plot look at this so i have three different age group of people 
so in this 10 11 and 12 the magnitude or difference in the marks at the smaller age is so close and when it goes to the next age the difference is huge and when it goes to the third age the difference is so huge again so when it comes to the compared to the boys and girls again the performance of the girls seems to be uh, marginally or if it is uh, been saying um, enormously high the girls performance seems to be high based on the scores what we have taken for the test but here i'm trying to compare it with the age wise so age 10 you can see the comparison between uh, the first two uh, uh, mean of marks that is six and somewhere it falls in the seven area and again when it comes to age 11 you're having the magnitude difference in the um, scores are huge and uh, during age 12 it is again further huge right so this is one basic interpretation which we can see that so the girls performance uh, no matter whatever be the ages it is totally on the upper scale so the girls performance is so high now does age and uh, your uh, um, gender does that create impact on or does that have significance on your score so that i need to see it. so for this i need to go to the basic uh, univariate analysis where we can see the f value of this right so when i go to the choose the correct model i'm just uh, looking at this so you can just look at a intercept value i try to zoom a little so here look at the intercept so the gender it is showing 0 0.035 age it is 0 0.0006 gender and age when i consider it is 0 0.556 so now when i consider this your age factor it is having significant value of 0 0.006 whereas my uh, the alpha value what i have considered for the study is 0 0.05 so this your age significant value is much lesser than 0 0.05 so again, when it is less than 0 0.05, it is forced for me to reject null hypothesis, which means that age-wise, your score has got significant effect. So age and the score has got a significant effect. But whereas when you see the gender, right? So look at the gender. The gender value, again, gender value, it is 0 0.035, which is again less than 0 0.05. So when it is 0 0.05, when it is lesser, again, you can uh, concur to reject null and accept the alternate, which says that gender also plays a major role in creating significant effect on the score. So this particular uh, table is a highlighted value. And F value, whenever the gender identification is, whenever your F value is more, when it is higher than 3, 4 and 5 levels, probably your uh, significant level also will be lesser than 0.05. So even that you can have the uh, kind of a thumb rule for you when you're doing the analysis. When it is less, you can uh, uh, you can concur that you need to have um, the gender or the age factor is creating impact on the score or not. So this is how you have to interpret based on your um, two-way analysis. And the final one, of course, uh, just not taking much of your time, I'll try to quickly wrap it up by completing my uh, analysis on MONOVA because MANOVA is the major element where people are uh, adapting in various tests nowadays. So let's take on the data of MANOVA. So I just uh, gave you the MANOVA data. Click on MANOVA. Manova's data, of course, I've just made the interpretation and analysis already, but again, I'll uh, try to do it for you uh, right from the beginning. Um, Okay, so people, what I did here is I've just taken group A and group B. Again, uh, gender I have not taken. Instead, what I've done is I've taken two different subjects. Here, in the previous uh, time, what we took is 
we have taken only the history uh, i mean only one score of one subject so here what we do is we'll try to take up two different uh, scores history and math so between these two scores how do i apply manova so for which uh, there is a, a tool called as real stat uh, statistics people those who are using uh, so, i mean statistical analysis through excel there is a add in called x real stat so there is a website for downloading this particular uh, x real stat so i've downloaded this material already so here you can just uh, look at that material here so i'll try to share this also uh, through mail whenever you have this x real stat plug in with you you can uh, adapt to monova so easily so what we'll do is x real stat click on that once you download the material click on that one so for which before that you need to open the data sheet so have the data sheet with you then you can click on that real stat it will ask for this particular screen enable macros click on enable macros and it takes little time to uh, uh, install that particular plugin that plugin is nothing but real state real stat plugin so when this real stat plugin is added up click on control m right so people i just do it right from the beginning so click on control m so then the real stat screen will be open so now when you see this particular screen so here you can just see uh, the different uh, statistical tool everything under one uh, belt for example descriptive study regression anova time series analysis multivariate analysis correlation and the test like uh, chi square goodness of fit uh, network diagram all these things even uh, same is possible here so now what we can do is when we are uh, adapting this particular real stat it is little updated to the uh, data analysis view. so data analysis we have seen the uh, basic version of the calculation uh, statistical tools so here it is updated so now go to the multivariate analysis in multivariate analysis there is a tool called monova one factor and monova two factor so what i have done is here i am just considering the scores only the scores of history and math if i am taking some other uh, 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 factor also along with the score then i need to go for the monova two factor but i think we'll just uh, uh, we'll stop with this monova one factor i try to select the input range so after selecting the input range ensure that two things are selected one is significant analysis and group means these two boxes has to be checked so once after the groups are being checked once again yes multivariate one way and over click on that so significant and group means are being given okay so this uh, the data what i have brought in I mean sorry the uh, version has not been mapped in for uh, this particular excel okay, okay so probably but if you do this one you will be uh, seeing the output here after clicking on that you can just see the considerable uh, output in such way once again i'll just open the output for like okay so once you click on that uh, okay because it depends on uh, whatever be your excel uh, version if it is 2013 you need to download the real stat value which is 2013 when there is a mismatch probably that will happen because i've downloaded the file late in, in another system where i had the different version of it so probably that is the reason why it's not getting sorted okay now if you just look at the same analysis here between group a and group b between history and math do we have any have any sort of significance group a is a people who have attended uh, lecture on a colorful video group b is a people who attended on the discussion mode now between these two people because of this history and math um, based on the history and math score does these people have any significant effect or not so that i can understand by using these two for example i know a single factor is there so this is clearly mentioned it is a math score and this is for the history right so this is history and this is math so for interpretation how you can do for monova is very simple for the math okay yes sir the output uh, is not visible one second sir uh, sir how about now is it visible now ah uh, yes sir. okay sir okay. uh so now the math i've got the manova uh, i mean uh, the analysis here and history i've got the manova analysis here now let me cross check the values so here i'm not taking any other values here rather i'm just checking only for the p value 
right? So when I check the p value alone, I'm just cross checking. So p value for the math score is 0.6, which is much much higher than 0.05. So for the math, I'll try to make it here. For the math, the p value is 0.6, which is greater than 0.05. So now when it is greater, I need to accept null. And for the history score. My p value is 0.0017, which means 0.002, which is less than 0.05. Now, in this case, I need to reject null. So, when I uh, uh, when I given this particular interpretation, how I can understand the uh, uh, um, conclusion here? It's very simple. When I accept null, it means that your lecturing mode is not having any significance. There is no significance of lecture mode of group A and group B only with the math score. But with the history scores, you can identify it plays a vital role. So which means that your group A and group B score compared to the history scores based on the mode of lecture, it is having significance, which means your group A students and group B students based on their series of or based on their lecture modes you are having a significant effect on the scores of history but for the math it doesn't create any impact so for the math i am accepting null which means that there is no significant relation between or effect between the score of mathematics subject with mode of delivery for two different groups on the other side i accept null which is for history so when i go for the history subject it is clearly mentioning that i need to reject null which means that your score of history subject is completely having significant uh, effect because of the mode of delivery of lecture for group A and group B. So this is how the basic understanding of MANOVA also functions. And when you go for uh, MANOVA uh, across SPSS, again, you do the same here. Manova for SPSS. I've shared a file here. Again, the same two way ANOVA. We can take it up and we can input the score two. Right. So I just copy the same scores. So I'm just taking it as a score two and I'm reducing the decimal values here. So when I do that one, my new scores are ready. I can make some sort of an alteration here. So I just made some significance here. So this becomes my score two value. I'm just arbitrarily, I'm just doing this. Okay, fine. So now when I do this particular study, again, when you're using a SPSS tool, go to analysis. In analysis, go to the general linear model. In general linear model, you can find a way, I mean, uh, um, multivariate as a list there. In the multivariate, you can go for choosing the dependent value. So here the dependent values are score one and score two. And uh, you take age or gender anyway. So you can take fixed factors or even the both gender and age becomes your fixed factors. So here again, I'm not making any further changes on the uh, values here. Plots, as I told you already, always when you're having the more number of options, take that to the horizontal and the gender, which you're having lesser number of options in your uh, question, take that to the separate lines. And you can add that one, continue further. And gender display means of these two, descriptive statistics and homogeneity test. As I told you, estimates of the effect size is important when you're having the larger sample sizes. So you can click on this larger sample size when you're doing it, click on this estimate of effect size also. And my significance level is, as I told you, 0.05, that, uh, that is uh, constant. And when you click on this, you'll be getting uh, the output of MANOVA. So again, output of the MANOVA, again, you can just see score one, score two, significant value 0 0.905 and 0 uh, uh, 0.669. Now let's get into the significant values here. 
sir is at the output table sir ah uh, yes sir sorry Uh, sir, is it output visible, sir? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay, sir, thank you. Okay, so now that score two, you can just see uh, there was a strong decrease in the value in the boy score, and there is a concrete increase in the girl score. It has also been studied here. That's estimated marginal means. Uh, whereas for your score one, of course, this we have already studied. So the score one that doesn't have any big change. So now let's uh, get on with uh, your significance value. so go to the significance value so i can see the gender and age so gender and age always it shows the significance there 0.35 and 0.006 so both are having the lesser value and significance in the gender and age again it's the same if you go to this two way anova and the manova score the values will not have any huge impact unless you have the change in the sample size your multivariate values change will not be there uh, subsequently it will be the same values here right so significance value and the p value so those are the elements which you need to consider for doing the study so we can just look at the multivariate test what we have done always your intercept values for uh, significance intercept values uh, these values are not uh, uh, discussed in detail because this Pillay's trace and Wilks lambda, Hortling trace and Roy's largest. So these values uh, have a different uh, impact on these values, but that we need not be uh, studied now. So for the basic analysis, which is good enough to know the significance value of this particular table, that is uh, good enough for you to um, go for the further interpretations. So here, age and gender uh, have uh, equal significance on both score and and score two. So that's how you need to. Write the interpretation for this uh, uh, analysis. So again, when you keep changing the analysis, your output and your uh, data file will keep working, keep changing. So based on that, you can think about uh, um, expanding your study or expanding your research across various um, social problems, various um, problem areas, identification that is possible. And when you try to do it in the uh, with understanding of why this test is required, so unnecessarily the test may not be put. When you have this. comparison is required only then you have to choose that particular analysis so people that's an over for you um of course i'll just get like over shot on the time so i'll try to stop here and uh, any questions or anything if you just wanted to have a clarification let's have a uh, few minutes for that other than that if you have any question kindly put it in the chat box or raise your hand i'm happy to unmute you If there is no question, Arun uh, sir, very wonderful session, very elaborate session. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. A great time what you spent with us, and uh, it is a very wonderful evening, learning evening for all of us. Thank you so much, Arun sir. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, dear participants, we will meet you on a day six tomorrow, and we will move forward. Thank you so much. Have a great day.